The one data codes for amino acids were developed by Dr. Margaret Dayhoff. She is an American physical chemist who is a pioneer in the field of bioinformatics. She passed away in 1983. When she was working on protein informatics, the computers used to use punch cards for recording data. She attempted to reduce the size of the data files used to describe amino acid sequences of proteins, and she developed one data codes. So nowadays, we use one data codes extensively in the laboratory, and in this lecture, we use her one data codes. I'll tell you an easy way to remember them. There are four easy ways to remember the one data codes. The number one, if only one amino acid begins with a certain letter, that letter is used. It's easy. For example, look at the valine. Here's the structure of valine. The valine is the only one amino acid that starts with B. That's why. Valine is B. Then there's isoleucine. Isoleucine is the only one that starts with I. That's why I. It's really easy. The methionine here and cysteine here. If you remember, cysteine is the one of the amino acids that use sulfur atom. Then here's the serine here, S, and histidine, H. Okay? Then the number two, if more than one amino acid begins with a certain letter, that letter is assigned to the most commonly occurring amino acid. So here's alanine. Alanine starts with A. That's why it is A. But actually, aspartic acid, asparagine, starts with A. But they are not A because alanine is the most abundant in, uh, among these three amino acids. So here's leucine. Leucine starts with L, that's why it's L, but lysine also starts with L, but lysine is, is not L. We use L for leucine because leucine is more abundant than lysine. The proline here, proline is P, but phenylalanine is F. There here is glycine. There are three amino acids that start with G, but we use G for glycine. Then there is threonine, the same thing here. Then we don't use the uh, T for tyrosine. So the point is, uh, what amino acids are commonly occurring amino acids? Then I would say, the smaller amino acids tend to be more abundant, or simple amino acids tend to be more abundant. Or hydrophobic amino acids may be more abundant. If you look at the protein structure, many of the protein, many of the uh, amino acids are inside the protein structures. They tend to be more um, oily or hydrophobic. So if you look at the uh, structure of these, they are simple and sometimes oily. Uh, molecules. That's why if you see the simple and more oily amino acids, you can use the first letter. That's how you can remember. Number three, some of the others are phonetically suggestive. These are harder to remember. Here's the structure of phenylalanine. Phenylalanine has an aromatic structure right here. Ferronylalanine started with P, but we use P for proline. That's why we can't use P for phenylalanine. We use F. But, uh, you know, F is phonetically suggestive. Phenylalanine. Then also, look at tyrosine here. Tyrosine has an aromatic structure right here as well. 
We use T for threonine. That's why we can't use T. We use Y for tyrosine, but tyrosine Y is phonetically suggestive. The tryptophan is slightly different. Tryptophan has an indoor structure right here, a two ring structures fused to each other. Then this is the only amino acid, amino acid that has a double ring structure. That's why we can use W. We, can use, we cannot use T. We use T for threonine. Then now, last one is arginine. Arginine is R because it's phonetically associated. Arginine. We use A for alanine. We can't use the A for arginine. Let's go to the next one. The last way is this one. Aspartic acid, asparagine, glutamic acid, glutamine, and lysine are hard to remember, right? They, these are really hard to remember. You just simply need to remember them. Here's the structure of aspartic acid, then glutamic acid. These two, if you remember, these two are umami amino acids. They taste really good. The aspartic acid is actually D, and glutamic acid is E. Then we can't use A for aspartic acid because we used A for alanine. It's a D. The glutamic acid is E. Then you gotta get used to this. Then the trick is the smaller, the earlier in the alphabet. If you look at the structure here, aspartic acid is smaller than glutamic acid, one carbon smaller. That's why we can use D for aspartic acid, E for glutamic acid. How about this one? So these two are derivatives of aspartic acid and glutamic acid. Uh, these have a NH2 at this position. <coughs> It's called amide structure. It's an amide structure here. Then we use N for asparagine and Q for glutamine. Right? Again, the earlier and smaller, the earlier in the alphabet. But glutamine is really, really uh, hard to remember. Um, uh, I would say glutamine, glutamine, Q glutamine is kind of similar. That's all I can say. Then last one is lysine. Lysine here. We can't use L for lysine because we use L for leucine. Then K is close to L. That's why we use K. So that's all. Then now you can remember all of the uh, uh, one letter cause. In the next video clip, we are going to do some practice. <laughs>